Feedlot is a round-the-clock operation of feeding cattle with a focus on animal health, nutrition, and well-being, finishing cattle before they go to market. Cattle are fattened up or finished on the feedlot over a short period of time. It is the last point of the process and the most intensive component of beef production, where a significant portion of value is added. Canada's beef cattle spend most of their lives on open pasture, eating a forage-based diet. For the last few months of their lives, most move to a feedlot for finishing at around 11 months of age. At the feedlot, a great deal of care, attention, and science goes into ensuring the well-being, health, and comfort of the cattle and to providing them with the optimal diet. For feedlot cattle to reach their full growth potential, they need a balanced ration that supplies all their nutritional requirements and maximizes their growth rate. Beef production in a feedlot begins with a diet made up of forages and is changed slowly until it is comprised of about 90% grain. Grain finishing produces tender, marbled beef and is also very efficient, resulting in more food in less time. Upon arrival at the feedlot, cattle are herded through a tagging and immunization process. Cattle may be exposed to different kinds of diseases throughout their lifetime and are not naturally immune to some illnesses. Therefore, they must receive vaccinations in order to develop a resistance and promote herd immunity. The health and immunity of the cattle is closely related to nutrition. The use of vaccinations and antibiotics in food animals is strictly regulated, and feedlots work closely with veterinarians to ensure they are used appropriately. A nutritionally balanced diet um, involves looking after protein levels, carbohydrate levels, and then vitamins and, and minerals. We take feeder cattle and, and utilize grains, as well as uh, crop residues, as well as byproducts of the human food industry. The, the feedlot industry is very good at utilizing byproducts uh, from these industries that would otherwise be put into a landfill and, and discarded otherwise, um, and not used for human food consumption. The beef from a, a feedlot finished animal is very high quality and desired around the world. The ear tags are for identification of the livestock, so each individual animal can be traced to specific locations. All cattle in Canada are fitted with a radio frequency identification, RFID tag. These tags are key for tracing and controlling animal diseases. The tag can provide a permanent record of basic information, such as where the cow originally came from, its date of birth, sex, breed, and species and can also be used to monitor what each individual animal has been fed and the exact amount that it ate. Feeding rations change as animals go through the finishing process. When cattle enter a feedlot, they are fed a high-energy starter ration of mostly forages. The nutritious and easily digestible finishing diet consists of a very precise and high-energy ration, 80% grain-based and 20% forages, to ensure a balance of health, growth, and meat quality. The grain is mainly barley in Alberta, with the forages being a mix of silage and hay. Cattle initially entering the feedlot are not immediately put on such a concentrated diet, but are gradually fed this combination over several weeks. Nutritionists like Dirk create and balance rations to guarantee livestock dietary needs are addressed and to provide maximum production of a producer's animals while ensuring the ration suggested is of the lowest cost to the producer. There are three primary constituents in cattle feed. The concentrate, which is typically grain, the roughage, or silage, and supplements, including minerals and vitamins. The makeup of the feed varies with the gender of the animal and how long it has been in the feedlot. It is the job of the feedlot nutritionist to delicately balance each component to customize the precise needs of the cattle at each stage of the feedlot stay. Feeding rations change as animals go through the finishing process. The starter feed ration for animals coming off pasture into the feedlot is high in roughage, such as hay. In comparison, the ration for cattle that are almost finished is high in grains. Grain plays an essential role in the beef industry's ability to provide its customers with premium, flavorful beef. The cattle have plenty of room to move around in the open-air feedlot pens and have free access to feed and water. Cattle are monitored daily to ensure their health and dietary needs are being met and to watch for any indications of potential health issues. Cattle will typically spend 60 to 200 days in a feedlot where they are fed nutritionally balanced rations, 
until they reach the optimum weight for going to market and processed into beef. My job is I'm in charge of uh, taking care of the cattle and making sure they're not sick and uh, treating them if they are. I saddle my horse in the morning and I go and start in one of our pens and I spend, I don't know, about two to three minutes in each pen checking waterers, checking to see if the cattle are sick or if they're lame and if they are, I'll pull them out and we'll treat them for whatever uh, they need to be treated for. Uh, I'm also in charge of shipping cattle here uh, when cattle are ready to go to uh, the slaughter plant then I am in charge of getting them on the trucks and making sure they're on safe and uh, in the right order. Cattle are fed a grain-based ration usually twice a day on a limit fed basis. They are not fed free choice because of risk of bloating called acidosis. Instead, they're allocated only enough feed to fill themselves in one feeding, with some feed left over. Main feeding times are in the late morning and evening. Fresh, clean water and salt is available to all animals free choice. Care is taken on a daily basis to check for sick animals. Feedlots cannot make any income off sick, distressed animals. So health and welfare is important for not only meat quality, but business as well. Being in the role of a manager, um, I'm overlooking the feeding, the pen checking, the shipping, making sure animals, when they go to slaughter, they don't have a withdrawal. All animal health side, low stress animal handling, training new employees, making sure that they get set on the right track to make the animals here comfortable and they can enjoy their time as best as possible. They come in in all sorts of different weight, weight classes depending on the time of year. Looking forward, it's fall run is coming, so we'll start to get calves in from Auction Mart and some Ranch Direct. Typically at KCL, we get calves in anywhere from 450 to 650 pounds. Upon them arriving at KCL, we will induct them within 48 hours, and that involves giving them an antibiotic, an implant, some IBR boosters, and some fresh feed. When they're fairly new cattle, we'll start them on a high roughage ration, which will include mostly silage and hay. And we feed corn silage here, and then chopped up and packed in our silage bit. As they get older, their ration will change. We will start to feed more grain, higher nutrients, um, or higher energy feed so they can perform better and so they can put on more weight in the least amount of time. Cattle are confined to a dry lot that often holds around 70 to 80 head of cattle at a time. They stay within this pen for anywhere from three to six months. The pens are spacious, allowing each animal ample room to behave naturally in terms of movement and interaction. For the comfort of the cattle during their stay, Bedding is added regularly for resting, and all animal waste is regularly removed for optimal health and well-being. While in the feedlot, cattle are given ample amounts of clean, fresh water on a regular basis. Even with a well-managed feeding program, animal performance will lag if cattle have to struggle through mud and or manure to get to the feed bunk or water and don't have enough space to rest comfortably. That's why advances in pen design and construction are creating a healthier environment for cattle while on the feedlot. Behind us we have some fly ash pens. It's a new technology that's just come out uh, the last few years and um, we've been putting it in because uh, we've been spending so much money on um, the use of like, putting in clay back in the pens after it's been punched out by cattle. Um, this product removes that. Rolled compacted concrete is uh, it's a byproduct. It has fly ash in it that comes from the coal plants. When mixed with concrete powder and, and dry rolled into the pens, it, it fires and creates a concrete-like substance um, that's quite a bit cheaper than, than wet concrete. It will last up to, from 10 to 15 years, maybe even longer. It saves on cleaning time. It's, it's very easy for an unskilled operator to clean a fly ash pen compared to a dirt floor pen. When you're losing eight to 10 inches of clay in the wet springs, um, the environment isn't that great for cattle and um, here you don't see that anymore. 
There's also better feed conversion. Um, foot health is better in these pens. I, I, th I think people could use it as a form of dust control. Uh, in the dry evenings of the summer, uh, you could look down the alleys and there was a, quite, quite a difference between our dirt floor pens and our rolled compacted concrete pens. We're expecting that it could be a five to seven year payback uh, compared to putting in dirt or clay into the pens. Roller compacted concrete is becoming increasingly popular in prairie feedlots. They bring possible improvements in animal welfare, food safety, and productivity, making it a worthwhile investment for the feedlot owner. It's quite expensive to do, but I think in the long run, we see some significant savings with our manure hauling bill. We're not hauling any dirt out. The cattle are, are obviously standing on a hard surface, so you'll be getting better gains and the cattle are healthier and happier. And also the employees really like it because they're not sinking in, up their knees in mud when there are rain events. Roller compacted concrete was developed in the 1960s, but its application in the feedlot world is new. The benefits for cattle health, feedlot efficiencies, and environmental performance are all being studied, but feedlots using the product have already observed reduced pen dust, which improves air quality, as well as water quality in the dugouts near the pens reduced loss of clay every time the pen is cleaned. This means less pen maintenance and also reduces the emissions created by trucks hauling away manure mixed with clay. Less mud in pens gives cattle more room to roam and also promotes foot health. Monitoring weight gain and feed intake is important in determining readiness for processing. Once a group of animals have reached target weight and size, they are moved out of the pen and loaded onto cattle liners to go to the processing plant. Pens are cleaned out after a group of cattle are moved out and made ready for the arrival of new cattle. Cattle feeders possess extensive training and experience in animal husbandry. These skills, combined with sound professional judgment, are integral to the many day-to-day -day animal care decisions impacting the well-being of individual animals and overall herd health. From the hands-on operation of the feedlot out in the pens, there is another side to the business that involves more of the management and administration. Carlene Clark is a co-owner of the feedlot and looks after the financial and marketing aspects of the day-to-day -day feedlot operations. A graduate of Lethbridge University, Carlene brings several business management and agricultural qualifications with her. Um, I went to the University of Lethbridge and took my bachelor's in management. Um, I was lucky there that I was able to kind of curate my degree towards agriculture and business. So I took a lot of business classes like economics and uh, finance, accounting, marketing. But then I was also able to take some ag courses, so it worked out really well. I brought it back um, about three years ago now and have been working full time ever since. I also help out with the risk management. So um, cattle are sold on uh, a market board so we never know the prices so there's a lot of risk to that um, so I help my father to manage those risks with forward contracts and options and all these technical crazy things. <laughs> For performance and other aspects of the business we do a lot of benchmarking with ourselves and with other feedlots in the area. I would definitely recommend a career in agriculture. It's very diverse in uh, where you can where you can step into. So we have the labor and the outside side. You can run equipment, you can work with animals. Um, and then we also have the business side. So you could come work at a feedlot in the office and do accounting or data um, analysis and stuff like that. Or you can uh, be a professional, like a veterinarian or a nutritionist. Uh, you could also go be a salesperson. There's just a lot in agriculture that you can do. It's very um, diversified. Uh, and then, but you also get the the nice down-home family aspect of agriculture. Most um, farms are family-run, so it kind of, that feeling permeates throughout the whole industry. Feedlot owners tend to be immersed in their business, and like many others, Les and Lisa Wall live on their feedlot. As a family-run business, this is important and a formula that is working for them. Our company was established in 1999, and since then we have grown somewhat, added another feedlot or two, and quite a bit of land base. So my wife Lisa and I started it, and our kids have joined us. And my one daughter, Carlene, went to the 
U of L to take business management, and she decided to come back to the feedlot. And now she's working hand in hand with us to grow our business. And we hope that you know this operation can thrive, so that, that grandkids can maybe have an opportunity to work here as well. And I think the people don't realize is that the vast majority of the owners actually live on the operation. So we live and breathe the business every day and it's not like we're absentee owners that live in the city. So yeah, we are there, we have strong rural roots and our grandkids are, you know, enjoying the state with us too. So we're very conscious of food safety and that kind of stuff. So yeah, we're, you know, the kids are quite involved now too, the two girls and the one son-in-law. So that has given us, rejuvenated us a bit too. And so we're in growth mode. We are expanding our Kota location by, we were doubling it and that should be done hopefully this fall. That is, we hired our own nutritionist. So we wanted to make sure that our animals get the best nutrition available in the world. So we hired a very young, bright young man from Nebraska and he's worked for us for I think like three or four years already. So and we take our business serious and the health and welfare of our animals too. Today, feedlot owners have to look to the future and consider ways to maximize their profits and bottom line. One way of ensuring this is implementing renewable energy to run the feedlot operation. We decided to explore the solar panel path because um, some of my peers within the feedlot industry had put them up. I started getting curious and I sat down and talked to a couple of them and it's a new thing but um, they've had some pretty good success, no hiccups so far. We could see some return on investment. We were calculating about a 10 year payback with the present energy prices so when our long term thoughts are that energy Electrical energy will eventually be going up gradually, so maybe it'll be paid back even quicker. By the end of this year, we should be able to see some significant savings on our power bills and maybe get a sense of where we're at. Right now, we decided to put panels here because it's a good location. It's kind of on top of a coolie pasture, which we weren't using extensively either. It's, the panels are being pumped into a meter by our feed mill. So whatever is not being used by the operation here is being put back into the grid. So that was important for us. Yeah, they seem to be working fine. Feedlots employ a great number of people from the local community and play a big part in the economy of the surrounding area. We employ a lot of people. Our small operation has over 25 employees. So we affect a lot of families in the community. We're very proud of that and I think we try to, we do send them home happy and safe, and pay a lot of attention to the safety and well-being of the families. So.